Welcome to the TR Business video channel. We're here in Cannes with Paul Topping, who many of you will, of course, know uh, for his work with uh, Flamingo International and, and, of course, Alpha Airports, I believe, in the past. Yeah. And, of course, some people might actually know you as the uh, ambassador for the Sri Lankan wine industry as well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which uh, you've been promoting for many years. Uh, welcome. Um, Thank you. This time we're here to talk about uh, not your work necessarily within travel retail, but another string to your bow, and that is, of course, uh, as an author, you've uh, published, written and published a book um, a year ago, uh, The Whinging Pom to the Point, um, which by all accounts uh, it could be described as a travel journal uh, peppered with anecdotes and stories based around uh, long haul flights and, and events that you attend in far flung places. Is that correct? Could you maybe elaborate on that? Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think it's an easy read of short stories around 19 countries. Uh, and having visited 150 um, and having lived in quite a few, it's, it's quite a small segment. Yeah. And it's traveling with uh, the various wives of the time. Uh, it's also scattered with a whinging pom random rules. So yeah. these are as simple as don't pass an Irish bar, go in, uh, which came out of a story from Baku because I learned more about Baku from an Irish bar than I did from anyone else I met. Right. So, so basically, it's a humorous and uh, an anecdotal uh, journey. Your career in travel retail, I guess, uh, was the path to these these journeys. Well, I, I mean, the, the the path was really, you know, I was born in Africa with, uh, with missionary parents. I toured Africa. I was part educated by my parents because I was on mission stations. So I think the DNA you know, started then. Uh, you know, extensive travel in Africa as a child. I then came to the UK. Uh, I've lived in India. I've lived in Sri Lanka. I've done a spell uh, in the USA. And, and because of the business I'm in, you know, I've, I've spent a month in Morocco. I, just the, the, the number of places. But to just pick out the the sort of the stories that were actually ended in the book wasn't just my decision. You can imagine how many people are involved when you put yeah. a book together. So yeah. this and, and and they're not all they're not all sort of following the theme of travel. I mean right. some of them actually talk about lost friends. Okay, yeah. Some of them talk about going to somewhere like Auschwitz where you know you would yeah. not come out and whinge, you would just come out as I did and not know what to say for an hour. Mm, yeah, but but ironically I'm with a Polish and an Indian man either side of me and, and the conversation didn't start for an hour. Mm. So it isn't, uh, uh, though in the main as you said they are, uh, there's a humour that goes through many of the stories and right. there's that sort of character of the whinging pom who is sort of an Englishman who's never going to go back and live in England which, which is what I'm never going to do, yeah. uh, and who has likes to use this sort of this Englishness, uh, but actually, you know, really as a lover of you know Sri Lanka and India, I'm a, I'm a Indophile that comes out in the mm. book. I love India, and um, and who has some unusual ho hobbies. So um, you know, I'm a great visitor of, of, of cemeteries. Yeah. And uh, so through the book, you'll see that some of the stories come out of cemetery visits. Right. Uh, and as I've gone around, there are touches of where I've been because of the industry I'm in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you, know, we, you know, we must all have those stories. Yeah, of course. Um, and I imagine there are uh, a great many uh, members of the travel retail uh, trade who could tell a few enough stories to fill a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, and you know, at one stage I even thought about doing a little bit like you know, Hotel Babylon and Air Babylon. Yeah. I actually thought of putting five stories together, going out and collecting other people's stories. Okay. But I've been writing for 10 years, yeah. and uh, because, because of all of that, I felt that, you know, people, people felt as well that, you know, I had, I had really got to the point where I should be putting a lot of this together. And the name really came out of my wife, who is an Australian Sri Lankan, mm. and, you know, I would whinge about Australia and say I would never live there, and she knew I would never live in England, and Sri Lanka looked like a, a great compromise, mm. so yeah. that's where we live. Great stuff. So, and it's twenty years now that you've, you've twenty years. You've been uh, there, right? Yeah, and, and and we love it. We love it as much now as, as we did, you know, when we started there. Yeah. And uh, and and it's 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 a great country to live, especially as a sort of I, I don't think of myself at all as eccentric, but as a Brit, yeah, uh, you get a lot more respect in well, a country like Sri Lanka that's had that history. I think, I think yeah. by nature, um, if you live in in, in a uh, as a Brit in an Asian country, you perhaps 
are viewed as eccentric, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's potentially some of that. Well, too. well when, when I got to Sri Lanka, one of the things I wanted to do was open an English pub. Now, that's what we did. We opened an English pub. Yeah. Uh, there are things you just can do in an environment in a country like Sri Lanka that you couldn't do in many places. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, that must have been a journey. Um, so. Obviously, um, there are many anecdotes in this. Is the, the one particular anecdote that you think is, would be pertinent to share with us uh, for, for this interview? Well, I, yeah, I, I, I hosted 250 people the other night for a cocktail, and I normally like to end up with Oscar Wilde quote, because I'm a great fan of Oscar mm. Wilde. And I've decided, having put the book together, I should end up with my quotes. And you know, one of my quotes is only surround yourself with positive people. So I basically said, you know, thanks for coming. You know, I feel as though I'm in a room full of positive people. And my quote is, you know, surround yourself with positive. You can't pick your relatives, but you can you can pick your friends. Yeah. And I have a host of those. And as I go along, I'm collecting more. Yeah. And I have a team around me of people who I travel with for other reasons. You know, who will say, ah, oh, that's got to be in the book. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, and and I've now written a second book, but it, it may not be what I want to do next. Because I'd like to do a tour of India and be the whinging pom touring India. Okay, so, so, um, so that was actually leading on to my next question. You see, there will potentially be uh, a series of these books, and <laughs> exactly that you're going to perhaps maybe hone down and, and focus just on one specific. I think I'm more likely to get published in India by doing something that's Indian specific. Yeah. And uh, and because I I'm a lover of India and I spend a lot of time there. I mean I'm I'm in India probably one week a month if you average out over a year. Yeah. So even though I live in Sri Lanka, I'm out of Sri Lanka six months of the year. Yeah. So India looks logical. I mean, probably Australia also looks logical. And what you really need to do is to find a publisher who believes in what you're doing yeah. and will influence it. As, as this book was influenced in any, many cases, I had to compromise. Yeah. But what I decided, it, you know, if I ever only write one book, it's a hardback, you know, it's in colour and, and it's quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's, a, it's a life dream ticked off. Those You've been carrying these stories with you for, for many yeah, years and it's yeah. a, a chance to get them out there to, so, to the public. So. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not the sort of book I could do in India. In India, it would have to be paperback. Yeah. It'd have to be retailing at 300 rupees or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, India will be different. But the concept of this whinging pom traveling around, I mean, I have a quote that says, always wear a jacket in India because you get more respect. Yeah. Now, some people find that quite strange, but I, you know, for me, it's a proven fact. Having yeah, yeah, traveling yeah, yeah. So often. interesting. And, um, sorry. No, well, uh, <laughs> just going on to say, so obviously, uh, you, you've been flying. How, how many hours do you think you've spent in the air now? Potentially, have you ever I, totted that up? You, no, you, I, I think I've worked out how many flights. Okay. I think which, which may be in the book, but um, how many hours? I, I would I would hate to uh, think. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, can we talk about perhaps uh, your influences? Travel writing uh, um, is is that something that you've always had an interest in? Um, people like Bill Bryce and of course, like <laughs> I mentioned Pete McCarthy. Uh, you know, where what's what are you reading that's, that's, that's driven you to thinking, I can do this, I can do this? Uh, I suppose before that is there's what's inspired me, mm. you know, and, and stories like Lawrence of Arabia yeah. and David Livingstone when I was a young kid and all of those things inspired me. To, you know, these people who had their stories to tell and did the things they did, and I found that you know quite quite exciting. And and I spent many years in sort of r running um, in British home stores, stores in I think I, I did ten years in ten locations yeah. in England. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that was the start of it but uh, I do read I mean I mean if, if you actually look at my book um, Bryson has a blue cover and I basically said I want Bryson but I want it in red with my uh, Union Jack hat yeah so that really I'm not saying it's a copy of Bryson That's but that 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 a is good idea wrong with it, yeah, it? yeah. So, <laughs> so you know in everything we did and and my, my approach is very different because I'm a marketeer, yep. was actually I need to build a brand, I need to have a strap line. Uh, so, you know, all of those things which probably a lot of people would write and actually say that's, that's sort of uh, not essential to the book. So that's why this book is, is really, I think, very different from, you know, the Bill Bryson. Sure. And, and in a way, the stories, are, the stories are shorter and are not a continuing journey. You know, he did the UK one, which was a, a continuing journey. Okay, so you, and, 
you, you can perhaps just dip in and out of this book and 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 find something. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but I've had things. I, I mean, I don't. It's a compliment. I have people who said, you know, my wife loves reading your book and falling asleep with it. Now I don't know whether that's great or not. But uh, and then I've had couples who've said, you know, we're fighting over who has the book. Um, <laughs> and and I've encouraged feedback because what I've really said is everyone I, I personally sold a book to, and we've sold about 800 books to date. Not that I've personally sold 800, but w with those that I have sold, I basically said, look, I'd like a photograph of you somewhere with the book. I'd like your feedback. Hmm. So we put all that on the website. So, yeah, yeah. we've got people having pom parties in England. Yeah. And there's a bit in here about gin, I have to say. And, and, and so you can imagine that, you know, from, from that point of view, I, I promote gin as being very British. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, we found that there have been spin offs and, and you know, the, the sort of journey post publishing to now has been as exciting uh, as, as the run up, and I can't say necessarily the writing, yeah. but they are, they are very different stages and you're not prepared for them. I mean, I wasn't prepared to sit down with a group of publishers and be told that I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that and that was the norm. And, and now when you come to market the book is I'm marketing it using my skills, which means that in a way it's like guerrilla marketing. You know, I'll, I'll go on a winery in Bangalore and I'll have a, the Bangalore book club and I'll, I'll launch. Now that's not the big rah-rah of entering India, no. but if the rah-rah of entering India would cost a fortune, yeah. And and you know, so I'm 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 finding ways of using uh, different mechanisms. I mean, one of them is I do wine and whinge nights. Sure. I do gin and whinge nights. I have quite a few liquor sponsors because they find it quite entertaining that I'm taking their brands and doing it in a different way. Yeah. So yeah. the marketing of the book keeps me as busy as the writing well, it, of the book. It is the, the bastion of, uh, of indie publishing to to you know literally have to do all the legwork yourself and get it out there with with a first book and putting that kind of thing. I, I understand you were also. Uh, writing um, features for a, a few publications yeah, uh, yeah. as the Whinging Pom and you've got your blog yeah. uh, at which you're, you're regularly <laughs> updating. As I, I noticed there's a few gone up uh, from Cam. Um, but uh, yeah, best of luck with it all. And it's, it sounds like a really interesting thing. We look forward to seeing what happens next, whether the, you know, the, the, the sequel will emerge in the coming years. Great. Uh, but thanks a lot for joining us today. And uh, no, Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for the opportunity. That's great. Thanks. Thanks.